earthquakes, hurricanes, man-made catastrophes. Those are just some of the forces that can test the capacity of a structure to stand or not. When architects, designers, and engineers plan buildings, they face a major challenge, determining the best way to create buildings that will be strong, safe, and endure all kinds of stress. While nature dishes out plenty of external forces, buildings have to withstand a variety of internal forces, including the weight and movement generated from within the structure. This means that architects need to create buildings capable of withstanding stress from the inside and from the outside, while ensuring that the end product will be affordable and aesthetically pleasing. But in spite of all the best intentions, in the end, sooner or later, even the best made buildings are subject to the old adage, what goes up must come down. So in fact, the chief job of an architect is to create structures that won't come down until we want them to. What keeps a building from falling down? Underneath the glass, steel, wood, or concrete, there are certain shapes, geometric forms, that tend to be particularly useful in building construction. For example, rectangular grids, triangles, and other strong geometric forms are found throughout every structure. Behind a typical wall section is a network of squares that, when expanded, create a grid system that helps the entire building maintain its shape and withstand stress. Behind the familiar A-frame roof lies a system of triangles and braces that help support the weight of snow, shed water away from the structure, and distribute the weight of the roof evenly. The triangular grid systems found in roofs are called trusses. Actually, the squares and triangles found in structures have a lot in common. When you brace the four sides of a square, the result is the three-sided triangle. Both triangles and braced squares are strong, versatile, and can be readily built out of a wide variety of materials. It's imperative that an architect design a building that won't fall down. Geometry provides the building blocks for the architect to do just that. Scott Loisel is an architect who solves everyday problems of bracing and design using geometry. A grid system in the simplest sense would have ball joints at the points of intersection which allows it to deform in any any number of ways depending on where the force might be applied or, or where you choose to, to push it from. If you were to begin in installing braces within the grid, you start limiting the degree of movement within the grid to such a point where only at this point two of the four can move. A fully braced grid obviously has no degree of movement. A virtually, a virtual braced grid would be a grid where you've removed a brace from one of the bays. The fourth in this case is virtually braced. There is no actual brace, but because the adjacent bays are locked, the fourth bay within the two by two grid cannot move. Your goal in bracing a grid is to limit the degree of movement. Architects routinely use principles of math, geometry, and trigonometry to design support systems made of grids, to determine whether a grid is rigid, and to determine the minimum number of braces needed to keep a grid from deforming. Let's take a look at some basic principles of geometry as applied to grids. Put four squares together to create a grid, and the point where they meet is called a vertex. 
Once you know one angle in a vertex, you can easily determine the values of the other angles. The four angles in this vertex, when added together, equal 360 degrees. If you know one angle in a grid, then the angle across from it is equal to it. A deformed grid is not very strong at all. Deformation can occur when excessive force is applied to the structure, which can cause the structure to fail at the joints. Grids can fail with disastrous results. A grid-based system is not the only way to support a building. It is just one of the more common and easiest tools available to architects. Now, having looked at rectangular or square grids, let's take a moment to look at another type of building support system based on geometric principles. The unique three-sided shape of a triangle is equally strong on each face, so long as the joints are rigid. But how do you take a strong triangle and translate its properties into a house or other useful structure. Underneath most roof systems is a network of connected triangles called trusses. Trusses enable builders to apply the strength of triangles to practical building problems. A typical roof truss is constructed of lumber that is carefully cut, mitered, and braced to provide a powerful superstructure that will reliably support tremendous weight. Like a rectangular grid, trusses also need to be reinforced at the joints to prevent the structure from deformation and failure. The connected system of triangles, braces, and struts that reinforce trusses is often called webbing. Jamie Brogdon designs trusses. His calculations and designs result in the drawing plans that are used to create trusses and the webbing that supports them. Jamie uses computers to carry out the precise mathematical computations needed to determine the most efficient and economical webbing system for each truss. No matter what the shape looks like on the exterior, the interior as far as the webbing is always the same. Um, for the most part, and what, it's, what it does is it forms triangles. Now the triangulation in the webs is transferring the weight from the top cord through the webs to the ends of the truss and through the bearings to the ground because the ground is what holds all of this up. Using principles of geometric bracing enables builders to take relatively fragile pieces of lumber and create structural forms capable of supporting many thousands of pounds. So, underneath the skin of every building, whether it is a wood frame residence or a modern steel and glass skyscraper, is a system of geometric forms carefully engineered to provide the strength needed to keep a building strong and safe. In fact, you might say that in addition to the mortar, the bricks, the lumber, and the other structural parts. What really keeps a building from falling down is geometry.